types of hardware, input devices. Input devices allow for users to enter data of specific media types into a system. And that's what I'm going to be kind of highlighting in this video, how each different type of device assists with the entering of a different type of media and those media types being text, image, audio, video, etc. Okay, so firstly, we'll take a look at keyboards and keypads, and they're used to manually enter text based data into an information system through physically typing the data. And you might be having a keyboard right in front of you right now. You press A, A will appear on screen. It's your keyboard that allows you to do that. But I've also highlighted keypads too, because you might have a phone and it has a touch screen keypad that pops up when you need to send a message. That is also in the same category, allowing you to type in text based information into your system. The next one is that of the mouse, as well as other types of pointing devices as well. Okay, they allow a user to enter data through pointing and clicking on objects which appear on the system's GUI, its graphical user interface. So I point at something and once I click on it, an operation occurs based on the coding that is existing behind the scenes within that specific software. So if I want to open an application, I put my mouse cursor, say, on Microsoft PowerPoint, I double click on it, and the operating system knows that means execute Microsoft PowerPoint, which then opens up the software. Okay, now, I've obviously just highlighted mouse, but there are other pointing devices as well, such as touchpads, okay, and you might have them on your laptop, tablets, which are good for drawing onto and getting in kind of an image-based data when you want to draw something with your hand, like a pencil and paper type method. Okay, trackballs, which are a rotational ball that allows you to roll the ball and makes a cursor move around on screen, as well as touch screens where you are physically pointing and clicking with your finger, which is what happens on your tablets as well as your mobile phone as well. Okay, where you can point and click to open what you want. But just understand that what you point and click on, every time you press on something, it's actually executing a command when you're pressing that based on what's built into the operating system or the application software. The next area is that of digital cameras and they're input devices which capture image and video data from the real world. Okay, so it can be a still image or we can also record uh, videos, okay, which is a sequence of images strung together as well as the audio associated in many cases as well. Once captured, the picture will then be stored in the system as a bitmapped image, okay? So it remembers it based on the pixels that make up that picture, okay? And sometimes, um, in the case of your mobile phone, you might use the camera on your mobile phone, and once recorded, it will sync it to iCloud and it will go straight into your computer. But if it's a case of a traditional camera like the one on screen, you may need to get a cable that you connect to the computer and then import the photos from your camera to your system there. But what's actually capturing that image and video data is the camera itself. The next area is then of scanners. Now, traditionally, scanners would allow for physical images to be digitized. You'd put it inside of the scanner and a light would go over them. And that image of the actual scanned object would then be stored on the system. Though, these days, devices have OCR scanners, which means optical character recognition, which means it can actually recognize letters and symbols that exist um, on the actual object that you're scanning, as well as other types of scanners as well, such as barcode readers, QR, RFID, and NFC technology, which can all read data from physical objects. And we're not always now putting them on a scanning bed. We can actually scan these things using our phone. Okay, and by doing this scanning, it enters data into the system and interprets the symbols or signals in the case of, of RFID or NFC, okay, inserting data into our system and then invoking a response. Okay, so it could be as with QR, I might scan a QR code, it highlights the QR code and then a message comes on screen, I click on that message, okay, and it'll take me to a website. Okay, so scanners have really broadened in what they can do because there's so many different types of scanning technology now and they're so easy to use because all I have to do is point at something, okay, it will do the scanning and based on what was scanned will make a response happen to the system that I'm using, most likely a mobile phone or some sort of mobile device. The next area is microphones and used to capture spoken audio. Okay, so obviously I speak into a microphone, it captures my audio. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. I have a microphone attached to my headset and it's capturing the audio data that I'm speaking as I'm creating this presentation. 
they play an important role in the digitization of audio for it to be stored on the system okay because when i speak it's an analog format it's i'm creating vibrations with my voice of different pitches and tones and all that and it's recording all that data in a waveform and then converting that data through sampling the sound wave i'm creating and digitizing each point of the wave so that it can replicate it in a digital form so that now that when you're watching that video it's being played back to you just as when i'm speaking it but it's all really stored as zeros and ones based on the wavelength i created as i'm speaking right now okay and then finally, I'll just talk about some other areas as well of input devices outside of the traditional. So we also have things such as remotes, which we use for our TV and game pads for our video games. Many devices also have sensors, okay, such as security sensors in your home and accelerometers, which are built into your mobile devices, which feel movement as well. All these things as well are input devices. They're gathering data from the real world, okay, and inserting into the system, allowing the system to respond to the data given by the user. So I hope this video has given you a good introduction to different types of input devices. They allow users to enter data into a system. From there, the system will do things with those data based on the software being used. And then obviously it connects with processing devices and storage devices and then using an output device displays that processed information that we into, uh, inputted into the system back to the user on screen as information but at this point it's all about assisting users with entering their data into a system.